Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Miami TV Life. And tonight we have a special guest for you guys who's going to talk about something very important that's going on here in Miami, and you need to be aware of it. How are you, Mark Chesney? I'm doing fantastic. I want to thank you very much for having us here today. Uh, very excited. Very, very excited here. Excited or nervous? A little of both. <laughs> Uh, you need to relax. It's just a talk here. It's Jenny. All right, guys. So we're here for an important reason. And there's something that happened in your life. How many years ago, you would say? Um, almost 18. 18 years. Wow. T time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. It's 18 years ago, my daughter was born. Okay. My beautiful Savannah. And uh, what we had happen is that Savannah was born blind. And uh, the doctors had given us a narrative report that she'll never see uh, ever. And it'll be in total darkness forever. And that was the final narrative report that we received. I'm sure you saw a lot of doctors also. Maybe they all agreed or? Uh, everyone did. Uh, we, we were in the medical field, my brother and I, and uh, so we had access to a lot of specialists. And that's exactly what we went to, a couple of specialists. And uh, so we saw the prognosis uh, was kind of grim, you know. So being uh, daddy's little girl was never going to see, so it wasn't too good of a scene there. Um, but the ultimate ending of the story turned out to be something miraculous. Uh, not just short of a miracle, it was a miracle. And that pretty much just gave you um, a reason to do what you're doing today, which we're going to get into right away. But uh, okay, so the charity that you have, Charity for Kids, mycharityforkids.org, it's specifically for kids that are blind, correct? Uh, well, it, it won't cater specifically to only the kids that are blind, okay. uh, but, but also children with special needs. Okay. You know, okay. So uh, any other complications that the, any of the other kids may have, then we cater to them also. Okay. So. But your personal experience, that's the only thing that's, that's happened to you, of course. I hope. Oh, yes. You mean <laughs> in the most dramatic experience? Uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely the most dramatic one uh, that's ever happened. Uh, it's been an uphill climb from there. Um, and the plateau that we've reached is beautiful. It's actually beautiful. And the cool thing about this charity is that not a lot of charities can say that they've actually had some kind of miracle happen uh, as an example, pretty much. I feel like the charity that he opened up is an example to, to a miracle, actually. And a lot of parents can actually take that and say, okay, if it's happened to him, why not? Maybe it can happen mm -hmm. to me also. So let's go from there. Let's go 18 years from now. Uh, how long did it take for this particular... Um, day to come. Well, what had happened, what had transpired was uh, uh, after the diagnosis with Savannah uh, from the doctors, uh, I had been uh, working with some of the divisions for the blind services in uh, Jersey and some of the other agencies that cater to uh, disabilities for kids. And uh, one day on my way to work, I saw Savannah. Uh, she was just sitting there near the door and she probably wasn't more than less than six months old. And uh, which I see every day, kiss you goodbye, there goes dad off to work to the office. And what had happened is I got in my car, and on the way down to my job, hmm. Are you getting teary on me? Uh, well, you know, this, yeah. You know, I always get back to that microsecond of a... He was getting a little worried that that was going to happen. The first thing I said was, you know, why, why would you ever be embarrassed of that? If anything, that's the greatest thing that you should get like that every time you think about it. Because it's, it's a great feeling, you know? It, it is a great so feeling. don't feel embarrassed. Feel well, proud of it. Well, it is it's a great feeling. It's, it's just that it, uh, it's overpowering, overwhelming at times. Uh, and what had happened is uh, <clears throat> no audio or visual, but uh, I was telling Jenny that it was almost like one of those little ticker tape things that go across. And what I had uh, a vision of thought was that Savannah will see as much as I believed. So you, ca you heard a voice in your head, right. pretty much. Right. It was sort of like they say in your conscious mind. Right. And, uh, but why did that happen? I mean, you had to have been asking for something oh. or in, in a verge of your life, maybe that you wanted to change something. I had been in prayer and deep meditation uh, since she was born. And I mean that I would meditate every day for hours upon hours upon hours mm -hmm. on positive energy. I'm a universal type of guy. And uh, putting energy and healing energy into Savannah and actually laying hands on Savannah. Right. And uh, that was maybe during an era in a time that people, you know, a little skeptical about that. Yes. You know, I think People are a little bit more open to that nowadays, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And even myself, I was doing it out of desperation, to be quite frank. But you were doing the right thing. You know that we are all channels, really. It's just a matter of if you want to use your channel or not. So all you were doing is invoking energy. That's all you were doing. Yeah, well, I understand it now. Back then, I was just in prayer. It was a desire to... Uh, 
uh, to help my daughter, and I was begging God. I was begging the universe, and, uh, and then that's when something very miraculous happened in our lives, and uh, in my life. And uh, what it was is that when I saw her going, when I was leaving the house that day to go to the office, and I went to kiss her goodbye, the door was ajar a little, and I saw the light coming in. And she had put her hand up as though she was touching the light, and I said, oh, well, you know, she was just doing that. Yeah, okay. But something stayed in my mind on the way to work. So I, what I did was call up one of the uh, people at the Division for the Blind and said, can you send someone up there and just take a look at my daughter? And they said, okay, why don't you come on up with us and tell me what was going on, what you see, what you think. Yeah. And uh, so I told her what I had thought, and uh, they did a very basic test. And what they did was they took bubbles out of her pocketbook. You could have done that. Yeah, I know, I know, right? <laughs> if I, she would have told me what to do, I would have tried it. <laughs> so she took this little thing of bubbles out, and she blew bubbles, and Savannah started grabbing for the bubbles, reaching for them. And the woman right out... Like that said, this girl has vision, yeah. and that's when I couldn't handle. <clears throat> you know, I. He just broke down. I would have broke down well, as well. Yeah. I would have screamed. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was such a uh, relief. It was. Uh, it was like somebody heard you almost, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, and matter of fact, in the same microsecond that I realized that she had vision, that it was a miracle, it was the same exact second that I remembered what I had been praying for, and that what I was sort of receiving from the universe was that your daughter will see, Savannah will see as much as you believe, Mark. And so then I knew that something kind of special was happening to, to me also. Right. How did the doctors react? Because that's, they're very skeptical to all these things. So it's very difficult to get them to actually understand this, any of these kind of things. That's uh, something that's uh, kind of strong to respond to because the doctors didn't want to respond to it all. Oh. I already had the narrative reports. They had already given me two prescriptions to uh, take her eyes out and put ocular inserts. Oh, what? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I just... Okay. So how do you, that's dad's little girl. And, and you know something that happens to other kids, and that's who they are. That's what happens. So yeah, Maybe uh, wait a little longer. She was only six months, for God's they're sake. They were already prepping for that. Uh, saying so that the bone wouldn't overgrow. I, I do understand where they, what yeah. they were concerned with, uh, but they were hitting me with things like left and rights, you know, without even consoling me at first. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of difficult for me to accept. <clears throat> so uh, when I went back uh, with Savannah, I said, oh, by the way, do you see my kid? And uh, she has pretty good vision at this point, you know. <laughs> the doctor didn't have anything to say, and I didn't really didn't want to... Uh, yeah. It was a miracle, so I was happy with the miracle. Exactly. Uh, I mean, statistically, you know, they saw some... They gave you what the what the um, you know all the tests said. That's pretty right. much it. Right. They did the best they could do, yeah. uh, and and I think that the the testing was true. I, I do believe the testing was true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that the energy, uh, you know, universal energy, if you're praying, if you're in deep thought that way on a consistent basis, you can heal. I mean, there are so many cases of people healing others now yeah. with laying of hands. I mean, I know certain people that are doing this internationally. So it, I was putting out the same type of energy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a happy camper, uh, <laughs> you know, and be able to spread that word now. And for you really, it was just like an experiment, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're just like, let's see if it works, yeah. you know? You know it, actually, it was. It, and because it was, it was sort of like the last thing I had in my bag. And, you know, and the yeah. CEO comes down to faith. It came, my last thing in the ba bag was prayer. And it wound up being the best thing in the bag. Very good. So there, there you have it. I mean, I think that um, now you made a promise before I continue. What was the promise? Okay, the promise that I had made when I got this little vision of thought was that uh, I will dedicate the rest of my life to helping kids in need. Okay. Were you happy about that? or were you like? I, well, well, I was, I have, he has no choice now, right? I wasn't overwhelmed <laughs> as I was with her vision. Of course. Uh, uh, but I realized, and of all people, my mom had remembered when I told her that, she said, you know what you promised God, right? Yeah. And she's very devout with her prayer. And I said, I understand, Mom. I said, right. So slowly but surely, I had integrated the, uh, the um, to, to God, my, my prayer to him, okay. my dedication. Uh, I slowly integrated it into my life and started forming uh, some of these those carnivals and festivals yeah. and giving back to the uh, kids in need in different agencies. Believe it or not, you know, a lot of people, and this happens every day, they ask, ask, ask for something to happen. It happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. It was, a, it was a coincidence. And then they keep on going with their life. And then years after, things go back to the way they were, mm -hmm. you know, the way they were. So um, I think it is important that you 
keep going, I guess, with that promise. Um, you know, I guess up to whatever kind of percentage you want. It could be 100% or it could be maybe 80 and then another job. I mean, I don't think it necessarily means that you have to live your life <laughs> towards it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you could live out of that, but, um, but I guess whatever you do, you have to do it because you feel like you're doing the right thing, you know? Right, I, I do feel like that. Uh, I'm, I'm generating a lot of interest in what we're doing now and I'm so happy for that uh, because of the fact that that's where I belong. It's, it really is my purpose. Uh, I had been doing other things in the medical field. It was great. You know, the money was fantastic. No complaints whatsoever. I was doing, I was a yuppie all, with all the toys, everything I had. Uh, but I realized- Yeah, but you had money, but then you, have a, you had a personal problem. Yeah. You don't have a personal problem. Exactly. And with no money. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that, but, but doesn't it make you happier? I mean, of course it does, yeah. right? Because I'm I'm uh, I'm doing what I had promised to do. Uh, I also find in this uh, work that I'm doing now, helping others, it couldn't be more gratifying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of it, someone said to me, well, you know, it's a ministry, Mark. I said, well, no, it's not a ministry. It's just something I promised God. And they looked at me and said, well, what do you think the ministry is, Mark? <laughs> yeah. And so it is in sorts a ministry. Okay. And, and I'm enjoying that thought because what I'm doing is I am helping people cross over the um, uh, the disability thing with their kids. A lot of people can't accept that. Yeah. And uh, now I'm a statistician with, uh, I have a database, you wouldn't believe, on uh, what happens to kids who are disabled in the first few days or for first few weeks and months of their lives. What happens to them? Uh, a lot of them get discarded. Okay. They, they or, or thrown out or worse. I'm sorry, what do you mean well, discarded? The abuse, here, the worst abused children uh, that I had researched were blind. How's that one? And what was abused, they were pushed around, thrown around just in a house by their parents, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. By their parents. And there were things. Yeah. And uh, because of the different uh, uh, emotions you go through, yeah. I guess, to, to accept a child. Do you think maybe it's because they think that this is like a way of God punishing them or something? Oh, yeah, I, I would think that... Uh, Which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's totally ridiculous. Uh, uh, I think that those people just don't have enough uh, uh, truth. Uh, I, vi I, I view truth as energy. Uh, there is nothing greater than truth. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, so no, that maybe they're very materialistic. They're just exactly. like want everything to be in society what we would call perfect, which is just have a job, have this, have that. Well, yeah. A little, you know, little house and everything's great. And oh, I was there though. <laughs> That's why I can relate to it. Yeah. It's a whole different scene. I had that and, and, and it's great. There's, money is good. Money is very good. It's healthy for you. Uh, and now what I'm looking forward to is to generate the funds that we're about to start generating again. Uh, and giving back to see how many kids we can help, how many families we can educate. Um, that's a big charge for me. It, it, that's what makes me glow. So, You are glowing, Mark. I, it might be the light, though, right? For the <laughs> no, I'm so um, how do parents react? I mean, you, you got to the point where you're doing seminars, right? You're talking to uh, a bunch of parents at the same time. Um, do you tell them all your story? of what happened? Uh, sometimes uh, I will if I feel comfortable enough, okay. like I'm comfortable with you. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll stop, I'll pull short uh, of that little microsecond because then I'll be crying all the time and uh, <laughs> I may make them feel worse. Do you feel like maybe pe some people might not believe? Uh, pro yeah, I would think a lot of people wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, now I've gotten into a, uh, a group or I should say an understanding of, of people and I realized, what do they call them, haters? <laughs> You know, and, well, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, in, in uh, non trusting people. And it's good not to trust everyone. Of, of course it is. Listen, those kind of people are just ignorant. That's right. why you call them right. ignorance. I understand it first, right? They are totally ignorant. You know, and, and the whole thing comes back down to is to know yourself, to understand yourself, mm -hmm. who you are, that this is our shell, our spirits right. are who we really are. I, I only got there because of a miracle. So it's not as though I, I was there, you know, because I mark it. Now, do you also feel like, maybe, I mean, what kind of life were you living before? Were you happy with it? Were you maybe too materialistic? Um, I mean, were you, were you paying too much attention maybe to money and this just kind of like turned over completely? Yeah, it, like it flipped. Yeah. I mean, it, what is it, 180 or 360? Like, I was just thinking of that. It was a complete turnaround. It, uh, money meant nothing after that. Yeah. I mean, my, my daughter, daddy's little girl, and there's something wrong, what's going on here? There's anything wrong? And uh, so yeah, I was materialistic. And I had, like I said, I had actually reached a, a, almost a pinnacle where uh, I was riding high. I was, 
you know, in fact, I would, when I was living in Jersey, I was coming down here to all the clubs and renting those Donzi boats, whatever they are, okay. the motor, yeah, so I was partying. Well, isn't that what everybody does when they come to Miami, well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you have money, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something normal, I guess. People just say, oh, we have to go to Miami, you have to rent something exotic, whatever it is. And then it turns out, you know, it, what's the point? There's no point for it. I mean, if it makes you happy, great, but don't do it to impress somebody else, you know? Right, exactly. Oh, this is a girl. Right, well, at no, the, not even. It was, it, well, that's what it was for me at the time. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah uh, but things did change completely and uh, my life was turned upside down and uh, and it's just so so great to know that if you take this for what it's worth it, it was a miracle I found myself mm -hmm. I found who I really am and I'm saying to myself uh, wow that's very cool you really do like that mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of people can say that you know yeah. that they know what they're here for yeah I, I think you're right uh, yeah. it, because I think it's a difficult road it's uh, I forget the gentleman's book that I wrote, uh, read, uh, The Road Less Traveled. It's definitely The Road Less Traveled, uh, Scott. And, uh, and it's a difficult one. And a lot of times, maybe not the one that you were hoping or you were expecting. Right, yeah, I wasn't hoping or expecting it. Yeah. You know? So, you know, we, we all have a purpose. You just have to find it. And sometimes it just takes one little miracle like that for you to find what it is that you're here to do. So let's go to um, w uh, what we're here specifically also, which is the event that you're doing this month. When, when is it? I think I'm seeing it right behind you. Uh, it's the 28th, not believe, it's the 28th of February. <laughs> I hope I, you're going to be there. Yeah, I better, I better remember what day it is. Uh, it's fantastic, Jenny, my goodness. Uh, Miami is being very receptive to us. Uh, I have a database. First, I, I have to applaud the youth in this state, mm -hmm. and greater Miami in particular, because that's where I'm working with these kids. Miami-Dade, the responses that we're getting, the database that I've collected is so uh, beautiful. It shows all the kids that are opening up to uh, their hearts mm -hmm. to uh, uh, pay it forward. They're, they're looking for direction to helping others. Yeah. They have a need. They have a thirst to quench. You know, I, it, wow. that's that's what I offer. So I've got the best job. What I do is I come. I tailor design uh, different uh, volunteer ops. You know, for for the kids and for other people for organizations, mm -hmm. and we're having a ball doing it. And so we had met somewhere through the, uh, the grapevine, a few people. My son, who is uh, very um, educated in music, he's a composer, uh, guitarist, and he came up with a, uh, a particular uh, opportunity okay. for us. And it's called Volunteer One. And so it's another segment of the company. Uh, My Charity for Kids and Volunteer One is another portion of it, which is the volunteer uh, portion. And he came up with some opportunities that are great. And one of them is, of course, he's a young kid, too. He got into this electronic music, and we're doing is uh, we're organizing these uh, events for teens only. And so this is um, from what age to what age? This one here is strictly 14 to 19, I believe. Okay, 14 to 19. And... Uh, it's, it's really great because it, it's um, very well monitored. Uh, there's no liquor, of course, on the, on the premises. Uh, this is gonna be at the Marlins Stadium, so you have a view both of the park and of the, the Clevelander. It gives the youth an opportunity to uh, experience a big club yeah. You know, the big bash type thing, you know, without... I hope they don't get used to it, though. Uh, <laughs> no, in one respect, we hope they get used to it every month. Oh, that's no, I hope they, but I'm saying I hope they don't get used to no, it, and then when they're 21, you know, that's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> then it'll backfire, right? <laughs> yeah, Thanks, yeah. Jenny. Uh, I just killed them. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I mean, they're not only there to dance and have fun. I mean, you're also teaching them something. They're there to help each other. So, of course, that won't happen. Uh, they have you to guide them. Yes, it will. And all the other volunteers. All the pressure on you. Yeah, all the pressure on me. Uh, but what we do have is uh, we have a staff that will be there. Yeah. And we will be giving them new volunteer opportunities during the show. We'll have our table set up. Yeah. And so they're coming there signing in for different volunteer ops. Awesome. Uh, so it's part of the yeah. – it's almost like a reward. The show is a reward. And that's the way, I, way we set it up with my son. That's so. it. A reward for volunteering. That's very nice. Yeah. They, and they get, uh, they get to experience something kind of cool. Yeah, so, so, of course, the parents can go with them. Right? Uh, most of them frowned upon it immediately uh, okay. because they wanted to party by themselves. But oh. I, I got a few of them to agree. Your mom or dad can come? Sure, okay, that's okay. So um, uh, we made them staff members, of course. So okay. uh, what, better, what better thing can you, you offer a parent at a club is to <laughs> say, you can come to the club also and monitor your children. Yeah. They were loving it. So I made a few of them staff members. It's like the school parties, you know? Yeah, exactly. Chaperones. Yeah, yeah basically chaperones, exactly. Even though I do think that 
that it's um it, it probably won't even be that necessary because the kind of kids that you're talking about that already want to volunteer i mean these are kids that are already in a good path you know so um they would have never even gotten to this event or to you if it wasn't for them wanting to volunteer in something you know right and matter of fact in order to reach us they had to have um researched on volunteermatch.org and that's a uh, an international organization that gives uh, volunteer opportunities and then they found us oh, wow. and we seem to be coming the better uh, volunteer uh, uh, company right now. And uh, that's what we're growing. You wouldn't believe how fast we're growing. It's like very quick. I think if anything, then it'll be good for your kids to go to this event because they'll get a chance to socialize with good kids. Yeah. You know? yeah. we're, we're giving awards to the children. Uh, children, I call, everyone's a kid once you hit my age. Teens. Teens. <laughs> Uh, we're giving awards for the best uh, business concept, philanthropic concept, both as an individual and as a group. So this way they can get together as a unified team. You know, it gets them to organize themselves yeah. and, and paint it forward. And so I'm having a blast doing that because that's what I like doing, teaching. Yeah. And the kids are loving it. The ones, like you said, they're there because they want to volunteer first. And then the reward is to say, hey, you're going to go to a big bash also. So is, is your son going to be DJing? Uh, I wanted him to, but he's hiring all the different DJ. Oh, actually, actually, we're not even hiring him this time. For the first couple of times, we've had it. Uh, they're volunteering, I'm guessing, right? They're yeah. volunteering, and these are some pretty big people. And if now we could get you some DJs, don't worry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you yourself and. Uh, I don't DJ, and Rika doesn't DJ either. But <laughs> well. all right. Well, it sounds like you have everything going the way that you wanted. Now. Um, Reach out, I mean, to whoever you want. I'm, I'm sure that you're still looking for sponsors or looking for, um, you know, different companies to support you on this. So uh, go ahead, talk to them right there. Hey, guys. Uh, what we can use right now is uh, a couple of sponsors to help us. Uh, hmm. Sponsors. What do sponsors usually do, Jenny? Yeah, Jenny? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to answer that. I don't know. <laughs> you know, because I'm saying to myself, what, what am I well, needing? It could be catering. It could be music. It could be uh, events. It could be even games. I mean. Very good. Well, you know something? We do need that. Yeah. The games. They have Bounce houses. Yeah, what is it? Bounce houses. That's exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you're telling us. We, we are in dire need of that, the big bounce house thing with the foam. They're allowing us to do that because oh. it's outside of the building. Uh, they have those big Jenga. What is it called? Those ga the game. Yeah, Jenga. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, what else? We need like one of those mechanical bull rides to be oh, outside. Oh, yeah. Wild. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool, cool stuff. The teens, I saw that, and the teens were really loving it. Uh, uh, there's just some of the, the immediate things we're looking for. Uh, but what we're looking for is the support from the community to allow the teens or allow us to go in and give a presentation uh, okay. to show what we're really about. And it's an educational program first. Okay, so that, that's the main uh, plug that we have here, the main thought to get across to the public. He's not going to bore you, don't worry. You're going to have fun, I promise. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a blast because it'll be my son, not myself there. Oh, yeah. No, you're actually very fun to talk to and I love the fact that he's very expressive with his, you know, with your face. Everything you say, you can tell that it comes right from inside and you just, you know, I don't know, you're living it. Oh, he's about to cry now. <laughs> Jenny. Uh, all right, so Teens Only Party, Splash Miami, and that is at the Marlins, uh, the, uh, we would call it the, the Clevelander, right? Isn't yeah, it the, the Clevelander? Cleveland right, so, the club within the, the park. So this would be one of actually the very few or only opportunities that maybe teens will get to party there. What right. time is it at? Uh, it'll be from 7 to 11, 11.30. I, think oh. it, I, th I believe the kids have a curfew. Uh, yeah, 7 to 11, okay. Isn't that a little late? No. No, the curfew is 11. <laughs> curfew is 11? Okay. Cut the show in half, Jenny? Well, I was hoping that they were there from like 12 to 2. Um, I'm kidding. No, they're not 2. <laughs> but actually, we wanted it from 12 to uh, no, in the afternoon. Be, that's going to be like a real like nightclub kind of scene, oh, you know, for them. So. Uh, the Clevelander is actually doing some special stuff for us. They closed the pool off, but they have these little glow balls, all neon. Okay. It's going to look really good. Great. The graphics could be great, guys. You'll never get an opportunity like this, uh, not on this kind of level. Uh, to witness this is going to be fantastic. Awesome. All right, so you're selling tickets. Where can they get them? They, or on the either online, and we have tickets uh, being printed right now that will be available for this weekend. Okay. And to make sure we get a phone number out to these young people okay. to find out where, and we'll be delivering them to certain... Uh, Maybe they can go also to um, mycharityforkids.org? And they'll get the information there? In fact, yeah, you can buy tickets right there also. Yeah. And they'll get the rest of the information from Matthew, who's the volunteer leader, my son, and he'll be delivering all of these uh, tickets. <laughs> yeah. 
We're going to talk to Matthew in a little bit. All right, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations, by the way. I think that what you're doing is great. And I love the fact that you're so emotionally involved with all this as well. I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, Jenny. Thank you. All right, guys, stay tuned here to Miami TV Live. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.